Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 16, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this segment, I am going to discuss with you the new NASA numbers that just came out today for the, for, for the respective of global temperature numbers. And what NASA has found is that June of 2017, I'm sorry, 2018 was tied for the third hottest June on record with 1998. Now, just to give you some perspective, 2018 is a weak to moderate La Nina year, and this is on the cool side of natural variability. 1998 was a very strong El Nino year, which is on the warm side of natural variability. And currently 2018 is tracking rather warmer than 1998 overall. And in addition, June is a bit of a nadir month when it comes to atmospheric temperature anomalies, meaning that June temperature anomalies tend to lag other months. And so, so overall, from the point of view of, of departures, of temperature departures, June is among the cooler months. So June at 0 0.77 degrees Celsius or 0 0.78 degrees Celsius above NASA's baseline average is approximately one degree Celsius above the 1880s baseline. And this departure, one degree Celsius if you're above 1880s, is a good rough corollary for total global warming. If you're looking at, for example, a reference point for keeping track of, of how much the Earth has warmed overall. Some, some folks use the 19th century baseline, which would, would, would make total warming a, a little bit warmer, about 0. 0 0.05 degrees Celsius more, or possibly approaching 0 0.1 degrees Celsius more. But the 1880s baseline is a good one because it's relatively close to the Holocene average, and and it's in it's in a rather overall uh, a, a range of temperatures in which the Holocene was very stable. So 1C departure is a good baseline if people are trying to tell you that the Earth is warm by 1.5 degrees Celsius already, they're not telling you the truth. They're not using accurate baselines. So just a point I'd like to make. Now, as for the spatial distribution of temperature anomalies for June of 2018, looking at this map, and this is a, a NASA map, uh, and of course, the the av the relative baseline is a 1951 to 1980 baseline, and of course, if you're using the overall 1880s baseline, this temperature range is is already above average from 1951 to 1980. So what we find is that the warmest regions, in in the context of departures from normal, were the South Pole, and this region in far northern central Siberia we saw extremely warm temperatures for the month. Relative cool zones included parts of South America, uh, a region off Africa, a small region near a, a portion of the East Antarctic coast, and the very high latitude regions of the Arctic, as well as Greenland. Now, overall, of course, temperature, warm temperature departures greatly outweighed cool temperature departures on balance. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that when we look at the zonal anomaly map. As you can see, certain other regions of the world experience very warm temperatures, such as the United States, particularly the Southwest, parts of North and Central Europe, and parts of the Middle East and running in through Africa as well. Also a, a warm ocean zone off of Japan has been a notable, notable feature for some time. And also I'd like to call your attention to very warm surface temperatures in the northeastern Pacific. These temperatures have been tending to warm up 
quite a bit, and, and we may be looking at a, a kind of hot blob type situation recurring. So, so we might, might want to take a look at this. this. This might be a feature that might help to generate some, some very strong ridge features over the coming months and, and maybe over the next few years. But we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Now also, sea surface temperatures near the US are quite warm, which, which can increase risk for, for strong hurricane landfalls. So those are some, some regions of note. I'd also like to call your attention to the global temperature uh, anomaly map based on zonal averages. And this is a latitudinal zone, zonal um, measure here. So if you're looking at the zero deg degree latitude zone, you're looking at, looking at the equator where temperatures were about 0 0.7 degrees Celsius above average in the equatorial regions. And of course, as we noted before, the warmest region was in the southern polar arc, uh, of the Antarctic, and, and temperatures in this zone ranged up to 4.29 degrees Celsius above average, which is very considerable. I'd just like to point out that in the austral region, so in the Antarctic region. This is austral, getting into austral winter, late, late, late fall and early winter. And under human-caused climate change, the poles warm more rapidly than the rest of the world. And this warming is most significant and, and shows up mo most during spring, fall, and winter time. And we can see this signal of polar amplification, a very strong signal of polar amplification for the month of June in the southern latitudes. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about the Arctic. So as we get into northern hemisphere summer, the Arctic temperatures tend to moderate. And if you look at the Arctic zone, the Arctic zone is from 66 degrees north latitude onward. And what we see is that temperatures in the lower Arctic latitude, so in the 66 to say 75, 80 degree, even up to the 80 degree North latitude were were above average. So, so this this large zone in the Arctic saw above average temperatures, while a five degree latitude, I'm sorry, seven degree, it looks like maybe eight degree latitude zone in the high Arctic saw below average temperatures. So overall, the Arctic was near average for June. And as I said before, maybe just a little bit above average overall when you, when you take into account the 66 degree north to 80 degree north zone. And, and as I said before, during summertime, the greenhouse gas effect is, is, has less impact on the Arctic. So you tend to get a moderation of temperatures, less warm temperature anomalies in those zones. So to sum up again, June of 2018 was the third hottest June on record. And this is notable because we are still in a La Nina influenced climate. So one of the warmest La Nina months on record and, and probably the warmest or the second warmest La, La Nina June on record. Thanks for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.